Hello everyone, it's Thursday and that means it's time for part four of the Halloween miniseries. So, you've already met Spoo Kitty, Platycornicus and the Scullicorn. So this week's prompts were pumpkin and insect or bug. Let's get into it. Which leads us to our little pumpkin spider. Now I do have sort of a little demo of him that I've made already. So this is more of a candy spider than a pumpkin spider. Uh, so he is what we will be making today, but we will be making him as a pumpkin spider instead. There are a lot of spiders out there at the moment, so I did debate whether or not it was worth it, but like, I really wanted to put my own spin on it. I knew that we had to give the little pumpkin spider a go. So we'll be making him a little gothic girlfriend today. All right, so as per usual, I'm just gonna map out the shapes that we're gonna need for, for this little spider, and then we'll get going. Okay, so the major challenge with this little guy in, is actually in the construction phase, and that is when it comes time to sort of fit these legs in, we have a very narrow space to attach four fairly large things. And so what I'm gonna do is on these legs is include a little flat panel uh, that we can use to sort of attach on so that like the thicker part of the leg will start slightly further out where there's a bit more space. And we're gonna do a thinner panel in the middle there. <laughs> and that's him from underneath. And there is some wire in these legs so he is poseable. Okay, so first up, we are going to make the little head and body piece. So we're gonna start at the face and work backwards so that we can more easily attach the eyes. And there are, there are eight of them. Little pumpkin pattern mark on his back, four shorter legs, and then four longer legs. So yep, so first, then we will do the legs, shorter legs and longer legs, and then we will resolve the face. Okay, let's get into it. <laughs> so the materials that you're going to need for this project are, let's start with the yarn first up. So Spotlight was having a sale and I treated myself to some pure wool. So the reason why he is candy colored and not these colors here is because uh, wool doesn't like to be frogged. And when you're just creating something for the first time, I find you need to use something that can be sort of frogged so you can get it right. But uh, yeah, we will be using some lovely pure wool today. So she, she was going to be a very fancy spider. Uh, and let's see, uh, hopefully, let's see if I can get that in focus for you. There we go. So those are the instructions on this particular yarn. Uh, you can see it recommends a four millimeter needle, but as per usual, we will be using our trusty 3.5 millimeter hook. Yep, so I've got that yarn in a purple, a gray, and an orange for the pumpkin mark on his back. So I got that ball in a purple, a gray, and the orange for a pumpkin mark on her back because she is a pumpkin spider. So we'll pop that to one side. Uh, what you will also need is the 3.5 millimeter hook. So I got that yarn in a purple, a gray, and an orange. So the purple and gray will make up the bulk of the spider. Uh, the purple is going to be where the green is on this little guy. The gray will be where the pink is. Uh, and then the orange will make up the little spot, the little spot on her back. Uh, you will also need your 3.5 millimeter hook. So the yarn recommends a four millimeter hook. I'm sorry, I know I repeat myself every video, but 3.5 millimeter hook a size down is just because it gives you a tighter interlocking stitch uh, and that will help you, your, your items sort of stay together nicely. I always size down when it comes to amigurumi or these little, whatever you want to call the little creatures. <laughs> uh, what you will also need is your usual scissors, the pins and needles, uh, stuffing. For this little guy, I also used wire in the legs just to give him that little bit of a, a sort of added posability. So if you can see here, I'm using florist wire, 26 gauge, it's silver at 113 grams. If any of that is helpful to you, it is just a very soft, it's a very soft wire, very posable, uh, and it comes with comes in a big long spool. So it's no good for um, providing a lot of structure, but it is very good if you just need a little bit of posability. So it's not very good for providing structure, but it is good if you need just a little bit of posability in your, in your creation's limbs. So we're gonna be doing some wire work today. So because of that, we don't wanna destroy our scissors and we will be, I will be using a pair of little, little just pliers because they've got a little wire cutter in there. If you hate your scissors, you can use your scissors for it. Just that's how soft this wire is, but I don't hate my scissors. Uh, or this pair anyway. <laughs> Um, right, and it's a spider, so we're actually also going to need eight eyes. So we're going to need two at 21 millimeters, and we're gonna, I used six at eight millimeters. So I'm just going to dig those out of their containers now.
Now, if you don't want to use eight safety eyes for this, you can always just stitch on the smaller ones. I would encourage you to get, at least use um, safety eyes for the big ones just because they get this lovely sort of shiny cartoon look. I love these big 21 millimeter black ones for insects. Uh, I've used them for my bee. I use them for a moth. I've used them, I've just used them for all kinds of bugs at this point and they just look so wonderful in my opinion. I just think that they are perfect eyes for bugs. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that is six at eight millimeters and I have forgotten to rub backs for all of them. There we go, six at eight. And these I, I bought, bought in bulk. <laughs> That's how much I like them. Uh, so we only need two of the, two of the really big ones. <laughs> as well. All right, so this really is a very simple pattern. Um, it's really just a very simple pattern and it, it comes down to the details as to how good it ends up, but like, let's, let's get started and you'll see for yourself. <laughs> Let, let's get started. Okay, so we are just going to start with our purple. Honestly, the first few rounds of this are pretty straightforward. We are going to do a little back post detail on the side of the head, so I will probably pause at that point and I'll talk you I'll talk you through it then. Okay, so we've arrived at the row that has the back posts in it. So we're going to start it by just just putting in five regular single crochet. gets us to the side of the head or what will be the side of the head. And so what we're going to do is five back post over the next three. So to work a back post, the back is the side with the tail sticking out of it. Uh, and what you do is you insert your hook around the stem of the stitch instead of through any of the loops. So we'll do one, two, three, four, and five. Five. So that's going to make sort of a little eye ridge for us. It's going to also really help us when it comes time to position the three eyes. All right, so what I like to do just to gauge exactly where this next stitch should go, because back posts do leave loops free and sometimes it can be a little confusing, is I count. So there should be 28 stitches around. So we're going to just count backwards from the, where we're currently working. So one, seven, and 28. So we know that we don't work here, we work here. So that's where our next stitch is going to go. So we're going to do 11 single crochet across, just working through both loops. And then we're going to work five back post again. So you can see there we've got a matching ridge on either side of the head. And then we just to finish off the round of 28, we need to work two single crochet. So one and two. And I would encourage you that at the end of this round, just because back post is involved, check again to make sure you've got the right number of stitches. 28, okay, good. I've got the right number of stitches. If I didn't, the culprit is usually one at the end of the, uh, of the back post where you've either skipped one stitch or you've put in an extra one. So if you find that you're coming up with 29 stitches or 27 stitches, go back and check. Okay, so the next instructions are fairly straightforward. We're just gonna do 28 single crochet around for three rows. Okay, so that's the front of the head coming along nicely. So from here, what we're actually gonna do is, if you look at the design here, we're about here. And what we're going to do is we're going to be starting to sort of shrink it down. We're about here and we're going to start running some decreases to pull it down into this pitch point, pinch point. Because we're about to start working some decreases and we do have eight eyes to pack into a very small area, I'm just going to stop and we're going to pop the eyes in now. What I'm going to suggest is that you insert all of them and then we attach the clips when you're happy with the positioning. So we're going to do the big pair first. So the big pair go just on the inside of these ridges. She looks a little bit worried. <laughs> it's all right, when, when they're stuffed, it will give a little bit more size and shape to them, but as long as they are 
in line and they are sitting on the inside of those two little ridges. That's good, that's what you want. And then we want to place the three little eyes, like eyelashes or little freckles. So just evenly space them along that little ridge. Yeah, so if you don't want to use this many eyes, like I, I fully understand because our eyes can be a precious resource depending on where you're located, um, you can easily just sew on three little black dots. All right, so I am pretty happy with the placement of those. Yep, so I'm happy with those, so now I'm just going to go through and attach all of the clips. So there we go, we have our all eight eyes attached. I'm just going to pop this back in the right way. And there's our lovely lady. Okay, so now we are just going to continue on the crochet. Like I said, we're going to work our way down the back of the head, still in the purple. All right, so that is the the unofficial, the technical finish of the head. We're not going to finish off though, because we're just going to uh, basically swap to grey and continue on from there. But what I'm going to do first is because this is just the narrowest point and we do have a lot of spokes to sort of navigate around, I'm just going to stop and we're going to stuff. And when you're stuffing, make sure that you very carefully navigate all around those, uh, those eyes so that everything is sort of stuffed and there's no sort of hollow points left in there and also that you don't stab yourself because I mean pointy things pointy things are pointy thank you thank you brain for that one that's right and you can stuff it quite firmly so there's potentially room for a little bit more stuffing in there but I'm going to just swap to the gray because we're about to build out into the body and uh when, when we have a little bit more gray to work with we'll be able to come back in and finish stuffing okay so in the next stitch we will be swapping to the gray now I have shown this before, but I'll just very quickly run you through how I do a color change because it's going to become very, very relevant uh, once we get a little bit further into the back. So what I do is I insert my hook, I yarn over and pull up the stitch. So I get started on that single crochet. We hold that the old color out of the way and we line it up with the new color and we complete the stitch with the new color. And then I like to always just work the next stitch I'm expecting, which in this case it's an increase, so two single crochet in the same stitch. So we're putting a gray stitch straight away in the same stitch. Uh, straight away to lock that into place and from there on you can continue quite happily with your new color <laughs> so that that's that's how I do color changes I think it's how a lot of people do color changes but that's that, that bit of information if you needed it uh, all right so I'm going to continue on now so that was the first of four increases that we're doing at the start of this row So that's the end of row 14 uh, and we should be up to 24 stitches around. It's uh, looking a wee bit crooked but uh, sometimes I wonder if my name shouldn't have been Crooked Knots <laughs> because everything I do has like a little bit of a lilt to it, a little bit of a tilt but I, I think it adds character. We gotta, you gotta like play to your strengths and if making crooked creations with funny faces is my strength then golly I'm gonna do it. Uh, anyway. anyway um, so what we're actually going to do in the next round is um, we're going to do a stitch through the back of the head as well as through through the stitch. Uh, the first instruction for this is six copies of a single crochet and then an increase. So we'll do single crochet and then an increase like so. And now with the next single crochet I'm going to insert my hook through and we're also going to see where it sits on the back of the head, which stitch it lines up with, and just pick one that feels right. And we're going to yarn through it as well and finish working the stitch. And we'll see that that's holding our work up at a slight angle, which is good. It's giving us that pose uh, and it's holding, it's going to hold this bit up against the head. So then we continue working. So to finish that, that repeat, we've got an increase in the next one. So that's two and we need to do that four more times. All 
Okay, so with the next row, we're about to start the little design that goes on the back of the spider. This is going to be what's guiding me, uh, and I will be uh, talking you through what to do. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to still leave this on the screen in case it's helpful for any of you in following along. And here's a version of the chart that you can follow along with. You got it? Okay, good. Uh, I'll even sort of try and remember to tick it off as I go. So we are going to need our orange for this step. So let's see if I can't get a nice clean pull. You ready? Ha ha! Okay. That, that's a point in the favor of this yarn. I, I mean, it's making me sneeze, but <laughs> at least at least it doesn't vomit everywhere. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna need that in a minute. So, so we're about to work a series of color changes. Um, and basically what I've got is my chart here. You might have noticed that I added an extra row in just because I had to go back. I'd missed a stitch, long story, won't affect you if you're following along. Uh, but make sure basically at this point that you definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, have 36 stitches around. Uh, <laughs> I had 35. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work three stitches in the gray, and then we're going to do, we're going to do a color change as we swap to the orange here. So we're going to work one, two, and three in the gray. All right, and then we do our color change. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert our hook, bring up a loop of the gray, hold the remaining out of the way. Try and stay a little more organized than I am. <laughs> there we go. Going to hold our orange along there and we're going to complete the stitch with orange. And now we're going to work two orange and increase and then and then we're going to work two orange and an increase and then what we're going to do is we're going to work one orange and then we're going to change back to gray in this final stitch so one orange and now we're going to change back to gray so we're going to insert our hook pull up orange hold our orange out of the way now you notice i didn't cut off the gray and i'm just going to hold that all the way across and change back to it so like so and now I'm just going to finish off the rest of that row so in in this case what that involves is we've done the first two after that first two of the five that we need so and then we're going to go three more one two three and then we're going to do another increase and we're going to repeat that we're going to repeat five single crochet and an increase three more times so And then last but not least, we're going to work four single crochet and one more increase. So one, two, three, and four. And then our last increase goes here. One and two. All right, so what I'm gonna get you to do right now is stop and check and make sure that that orange bar is roughly between your two front eyes. And if it's not, then you need to <laughs> you need to make a call about whether you or not you mind a slightly crooked patch or if you want to unravel and work out which stitch we've missed. Um, look, and I, I, I do just want to say at this point that if you hate colour changes with a passion and you don't want to do this, you'll note on the candy dude that I just made a separate piece and I sewed it on. You can just very easily make a little pumpkin circle and just sew it on if that is your preference or just embroider it on afterwards. So the colour changes thing is just as a Trying to, I'm trying to sort of keep these challenges a little bit interesting. So we've focused on a few different techniques across it. And in this one here, I wanted to look at some, some fancier color changes. And so that's why I'm doing it this way. But you do have options available to you if you really don't like doing color changes because they're not for everyone. <laughs> they can take a fun project and make it stressful very quickly. Um, all right, so for row 20, uh, in fact, for the next three rows, things stay, things are a little bit easier because there are only 42 crochet, single crochet around. Uh, there's no increases or decreases to worry about. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work two grays and then we're gonna color change to orange. So we're gonna work one and two. And then we're going to color change to orange in this one here. 
Then we're just going to continue on in the orange for seven stitches and then we'll swap back to grey in the last one. So. So that's seven there, and now we're going to change back to the gray here. And with the gray, we're just going to finish that round. All right, so that's our, the start of our little pumpkin shaping up nicely. All right, just uh, take a moment and just admire what you've just done. Look at that. All right, and we're going to finish the row again. There we go. And now we're all back in order and we are ready to start this row here. And look how nice this row is. <laughs> We've got just the two color changes again. So there we go, and now we're just moving into the mouth portion here. Okay, and last but not least, we're going to work for single crochet and a decrease. So one, two, three, and four, and our decrease. Yep, so that final decrease does uh, basically include a stitch, basically one of the first stitches we put in the start of the row, but you'll note that the first iteration of the repeat was six single crochet and a decrease and the rest were five single crochet and a decrease. So we did actually allow for that extra stitch just to make sure our pattern fell correctly. Uh, and then basically we, absor we absorbed that final, that, that stitch at the end with that last decrease, which got everything back balanced again. Okay, so that's the end of the round and at this point I'm just going to stop and I'm going to clean up a little bit. So we're just going to snip off that orange. I always leave a fairly decent tail to stop it pulling free. I'm just going to pack that up and move it out the way like soup. Alrighty, and there is our little jack-o'-lantern head. And then I'm going to come in and embroider on a little stem later. I didn't feel the need to do that with colour changes just because I felt, I mean, this might seem like sucker, pun, sucker for punishment to some but uh, I wanted to just sort of chill it out a little bit. <laughs> All right, so now we're just going to continue uh, basically working to close in this gap.
So uh, once you've worked your way down to an opening that's 18 around, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to stuff it the rest of the way. Uh, give it a little squish to give it, get it back into the shape you want it to be. And so there you can see the magical stitch that we worked through the head doing some, some pretty good posing work for us. Uh, part of me is wondering if I shouldn't have done the pumpkin up the other way, but I kind of like it upside down the way it would be <laughs> in nature. <laughs> and I think they're going to be good little buddies. All right. Um, okay, so now we're just going to finish working around until we've closed off the hole. So then we're just going to finish off and I'm just going to weave this around the little opening so just through each stitch. And then you give it a little pull and it pulls that little gap closed completely. You can just tuck that end away out of sight. Okay, so there is the base of our little spider, our little pumpkin spider. So she's coming out a little bit more uh, gingerbread and he's a little bit more cupcake. So that's good. That's exactly what I was looking for here. So next up we have a whole lot of legs to make. Just a whole lot of legs to make. We're going to be making four short legs next and then we'll be making four longer legs. So the four short legs go in the middle and then the longer legs go at the front and back. So the legs also involve color changes, but it's a little bit less finicky than trying to like draw a picture. It's just, just some nice little stripes. So what we're going to do is we're going to start in our purple. So now what we're going to start doing is we're going to build in a slight sort of bend to the leg to give it a real sort of natural kind of shape. Well, not natural. I mean, it's purple. But... So we're going to build a sort of a slight elbow into each of the legs. And so we're going to just start that, that now in the gray. So what we're going to do is we're going to work two increases in the next stitch. So this one here. So one. And then, so we're going to work an increase in, in the next two stitches. So first one and then another. So that is a total of four stitches done. And then we're going to do two decreases. So we're going to do one and two. Because what happens when you increase on one side of a piece and decrease on the other, you get a bend. <laughs> two. Okay. So there we go. And now we're going to just exaggerate this elbow a little bit more in the next round. So we're going to work an increase. And then we're going to work a single crochet. And then we're going to work another increase. And then we're going to work four single crochet around. And then we're going to work three single crochet around. And then we're going to work three single crochet around. One, two, and three. And now just to finish off this little bend, we're going to work four single crochet. And 
and then we're going to work two decreases. Like so. And so now you'll see we've got kind of a nice little, little bend in our leg. In the next stitch, we're going to swap back to the purple and we're back to some very simple rounds of six. So there is our short leg. Now you'll note that I haven't finished it off yet and that's because we need to create like a little flat tab that's going to help us sew four different legs into this. So we are going to need three more of these little short legs like so. And what we're going to need is the wire as well. Okay, so at this point I'm gonna prep the wire for the legs. And we have short legs and we have long legs. So because I'm using this uh, very, very soft florist wire, I'm going to be doubling it over. And you'll see here, I've got a ruler here. It's got centimeters across the top and it's got inches along the bottom for, for our Northern Hemisphere friends. So for the short legs, I'm recommending each one has a piece of wire about 15 centimeters long. I'm just gonna grab my pliers and a little twist off. So that's our 15 centimeter piece. So, and we can see in terms of inches, that is about five and a half inches long. And we're gonna need four at that length. You can of course skip this step. It just means that your spider won't be quite as poseable. It won't, its legs won't hold position quite as nicely. Uh, but if you just want a cute little floppy spider, you don't need to be fussing around with wire. So it's entirely up to you. You'll note that I'm not being super specific, but this close enough is good enough for this in this situation. So those are my four short legs. And then we're going to have some long legs as well. So the long legs need to be a little bit longer. And for the long legs, I would recommend making it about 20 centimeters long. And once again, you will need four of those as well. So the reason we make this so long compared to the le what the legs will be is, like I mentioned, we double it over, but then there also needs to be a, just enough left that it can stick back into the body as well and just help anchor the leg to where we want it to be. So that's why we give it just a little bit of extra length as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of wire. All right, so what I'm doing is I've doubled it over and I'm giving it a little twist for it to hold as one strand. You don't need to double it over if it is a stronger wire that is sturdier. And then I'm bending up just a little tiny foot at the bottom to make it less likely to poke through through the yarn itself. So uh, there is our leg and you can just sort of go ahead and fold all of those. So there we go, those are our little short legs. And so this is our one that's still attached to, to our yarn. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're just going to thread this down inside the leg like so and then to create that little tab that's going to help us sew things on the first stitch we're going to do we're not chaining anything we're going straight in back into that single crochet we just made and then we're also going to hook through the next stitch as well so and then single crochet through both of those we're going to do the same for the next two along so we're going to do that one and that one You'll notice that I'm working around the wire, which will help lock it into place. And last but not least, we're going to do those last two on the ends. So if you decide to not use wire for this step, um, that's fine. You just, you still do the stitches the same way. Now I'm just going to chain one, I'm going to turn back and we're going to just do three single crochet across the top just to really emphasize, just to really emphasize that, that little tab. I'm sorry, I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit. That's what happens when you film like four of these in, in three days. <laughs> All right, and at that point we finish off. And we tuck the leftover end of this back inside the leg as neatly as we can. There we are. Now, if you feel this leg, you'll feel where the elbow is, the little elbow we stitched in. And there's our first little short leg. And so now I'm gonna go full production mode and finish off these little four. Okay, there are our four short little short legs done. All right, so there is 
our little lady with her middle legs on and now we're just going to work up her longer legs so I'll grab the wires over here and then I'll then I'll actually show you how to make the, the longer legs. <laughs> They're pretty much the same as the shorter legs, just with a couple of extra rows in them. So once again, starting with your purple. by Mr. Gray. So these legs don't need stuffing um, between the wire, the thickness of the yarn and the tails that end up tucked down inside. They, they hold their shape so you don't need to stuff them any more than that. That's it for that leg. Now it is ready for its wire as well. So just like with the shorter legs we prep the wire the same way. So you fold them in half, Uh, you twist them up so that they hold as a single strand and you dip a little toe up and we're just going to tuck that down inside this leg which can take a little bit of wiggling around don't be disheartened if it doesn't go straight in because <laughs> uh, I've probably edited out the struggles that I've been having <laughs> so there we go it's just gone straight in no, sorry, I've just said that it doesn't go straight in. So it's, it's gone in after a little bit of wiggling. Uh, and then what we're going to do is, so the same as with the short legs, we're going to work three single crochet across the top through both layers. Doesn't have to be precise. If you can't get that first stitch, just make sure that you're closing it off as best as you can. And then at the end of that, we are going to chain one and we're going to work back across it three more single crochet again working around the wire to help lock it into place a little bit better so there's our first little long leg and now i'm just going to make three more okay so we're back and i have finished creating the other three legs it might be the next day so you might have noticed that what i decided to go in and do is just using a needle i went in and i've stitched just a little orange detail on these longer legs. I, I think it adds just a little nice bit of fanciness to it. But now we've got all four legs ready to go. And what we're going to do next is uh, rather than make the face pieces, what I want to do is I want to sew the legs on and just see what this character really needs to shine. So currently what I'm thinking is that I will make her a mustache uh, just so that I am sharing that part of the pattern. Uh, but I probably won't attach the mustache to her. I'll probably want to give her some some little bangs is what I'm thinking So that's what we're gonna do now. Alrighty, so to attach the legs first of all, we're gonna take them all off the body <laughs> Like so it's okay. You're getting them back. Oh my god. Look at that little face um, There you go, honey um, All right, so remove all of the nasty pins supervisor You can tell I've been working on a hedgehog today had to send a hedgehog off to Victoria this morning so all right so each side needs too short and too long okay so first things first I'm just gonna thread up my where is my pow power needle there he is so while I ow <laughs> ow ow when did you get this dangerous okay all right <laughs> So normally I do prefer to use the, the plastic needles just because I stab myself a lot if, I, if I'm using pointy ones. But for something like this, we have to work through four layers. A little metal friend is definitely required. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to line up the flat pieces on each of these legs. Going long, short, short, and then long again, like so, until we have all four tabs there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stitch through all four layers back and forth just along this top edge and we're going to pull it in as tight as we can making sure that we catch all four layers. Okay so now we have these little bits of wire left over and now what we're just going to do is we're going to just twist these two wires together into a single point and that will be the the thing that we stick into the body of the spider to help secure it. All right, so one thing I didn't say is do make sure that your elbows are all pointing in the same direction because otherwise you'll end up with just some very creative spider legs. Okay, so that is our first set of legs done. You can see with that wire in there, you get some real posability happening there. I actually think it's creepier when it's not attached than it is when it's attached. We're going to not cut this bit off because we're going to use it just to sew it straight on. 
All right, so and now we are just going to take this and we're going to insert that wire. Or if you, if you don't have wire overhang, you're just going to insert the whole piece or place the whole piece in there. Insert it into the indentation between the head and the body. It's going to be in there like that. Now you see that it doesn't go all the way in. There's a tiny little, tiny little gap in there. Sorry, and that's why we, we, that's why we sew. And so we're going to poking our needle the whole way through to the other side if we have to, because it is a very narrow gap we're working in. And we're going to make sure we pull those legs in as far as we can. And now we just secure on so it doesn't, so it doesn't twist. Now, if like me, you end up with some little wire loops poking out, you can just tuck them back in. And if you're feeling super dedicated, you can take a needle and thread and just uh, stitch through each of the foot through the little loop that we created just to lock them in place. I am disinclined to do that because once these little guys on, go on the shelf, I don't need them to move around very much. If you are the sort of person who is going to have it on your desk or on a shelf and you are going to pick it up and move it around and play with it, I do suggest you just take like I said, a little needle and thread and just make sure you stitch that loop down into the foot. All right, now we're going to give it a little tug test. It's on there nice and firmly. So they are first four legs and we're just going to do it again with the other side now. So there we go. I'm just sewing on the second set of legs now. So the first stitch I'm still putting straight through to the other side just to pull it all the way through. All right, so that's kind of the like official pattern, but now we just get to like choose to decorate a little if we want. So the little mustache pieces uh, for him, they were just, just really quickly, they were a magic ring of six single crochet and then I did two rows of just six crochet and then it was three decreases and then a chain for a point so if I wanted to just have them as uh I don't know what those little thingies are called but little face thingies not moustache face thingies but regular face thingies we could just attach them like so commitment to the bit so I'm using the I'm using this yarn and then all you do is you tuck that little end through but when you do it you are uh, don't pull it super tight you do it very gently so you preserve that little point because otherwise what's the point <laughs> and there you go you've got sort of a little pointed moustache and the rest is just artistry in, in how you attach face doobits so yeah if you want to make a moustache you just make two of those and you sew them on like so uh for this little lady however uh and i, I encourage you to be creative at this point uh, do what feels right. So for her, I'm going to do just a little embroidery, I think. So we're going to use a little bit of white and a little bit of brown. This is um, both Fletcher's, I think. So the brown is the same that I used for the platypus or the platycornicus uh, beak and feet. And then this white was Spooky Tea's, um, was Spooky Tea's sheet and the scalicorn. I have to remember which ones you've seen and which ones you haven't yet. Uh, the, and the scalicorn's um, skull. <laughs> So we're going to be needing both of those. So first up, I'm just going to use a little bit of this brown and we're just going to stitch on a little stem on the pumpkin. Okay, so I'll be the first to admit that that didn't add a lot, but it's just a nice little detail and I just, I, I love those sort of little, little touches. Just tuck that end in. And now I do just want to do, I think I'm, I'm pretty set that I want to do two little fangs for the face, but I'm just going to map them out with some pins first so I know where I want them to be. And I think we're going to go for that. Now I'm trying to decide if I want to put a little orange bow on her head, but I think I'm just going to say less is more and stop there. But all right, so you guys, you have to try this pattern and just show me who your characters are. Cause I just, I'm dying to know, are you more of a cupcake or are you more of like a gingerbread? All right, everyone, that's it for today's video. Thanks so much for watching. So this was week four out of the five that I'm going to be doing in this series. So you should leave me a comment down below and tell me which one has been your favorite so far. Don't forget to hit the like button if you're gonna try and make this little guy and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on next week's, the finale, the final final creature in this little, in this series. Of course, I'm already working on my Christmas series, so <laughs> it's well worth hitting that subscribe button and sticking around. If you've been enjoying these patterns, you can find written versions on either my Patreon or in my Etsy. I've linked both down below. All right, but other than that, I want everybody to have an excellent week and I will see you next Thursday. Bye. Oh my gosh. So uh, I've abruptly remembered that I'm allergic to wool and I'm working with pure wool. So uh, 
Just because something's on sale, it doesn't make it a good idea, I think is the moral of today's story.